Uh, good morning there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad you tuned in today. All of our friends out there in, in web land, in tech land, or wherever you are, on your tablet, your phone, your computer, or whatever instrument, and tablet, or, or device you might be using, I'm glad you've tuned in. Stay tuned now for the next 10, 12 minutes, maybe eight minutes, we'll see how it goes. But we're talking this week on a good name, having a good name. And on this Thursday, October 28th, 2021, I want you to think about having a good name. First of all, let's remember that memory verse, Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number one, Proverbs 22, verse number one, let's quote that one together and uh, jot that verse down, that reference down. If you don't have it already, go over it a few times every day, the rest of this week, and you'll have that thing memorized. Proverbs 22, verse one, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. So God wants to bless you. God wants to give you his loving favor. He wants you to have a good name and he will give you that favor. You keep a good name and serve him and he will open doors for you. He'll give you opportunities. He'll, he'll provide you with the ability and, and the place where you can do a work for him and count for him, lay up some treasures in heaven. And he said, loving favor, is rather than silver and gold. You ought to be seeking more valuable than silver and gold is having the favor of God on your life and how important that is. Well, we're talking this week about all the things that uh, we ought to have a good name in. I'm not going to go back and, and rehearse them now. I did rehearse them yesterday briefly, so you can go back and listen to yesterday's broadcast if you'd like. But I'm going to go ahead and give you a number four today, and that is we need to have a good name in, for in, in, in our enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. When people think about you or they think about me, I want them to think, wow, that guy is really motivated. Uh, that guy uh, really means business. That, that guy really does believe what he says he believes. In other words, we ought to be enthusiastic in our actions and in our, in our words. And, and as we go out into the world, uh, there ought to be something that's exciting and, and motivating in our life that we're just enthused about it. And I think old Jehu, who rode that chariot, he said in 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 16, he said, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. So they made him ride in his chariot. They made him ride in his chariot. Oh, Jehu, he said, listen, I'm not going to let anything hold me back. I'm not going to run and hide. I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm not going to be uh, under the control of the enemy. I've got some enthusiasm in my life. I have some goals. I have some, some, some things that I'm shooting for, some things I'm trying to accomplish for the Lord and for Israel and uh, in the name of God. And he said, just, just come, and come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. Zeal is a wonderful thing, enthusiasm and zeal. But zeal without knowledge can be very dangerous. That's why, as you think about having zeal, you ought to be thinking about doing it God's way, according to his word. Not just, okay, I'm, I'm, mad, at the, I, I'm mad at those who are anti-God, so I'm just going to go out and cut their heads off, that kind of thing. Well, you, you could do that, I suppose, but you can spend the rest of your life in prison, too. You, you have a permanent prison ministry then. But the truth is, that's not what God wants. He wants you to have sound knowledge, sound wisdom, as you serve him with zeal, with, with, uh, with excitement, and just let God do that kind of work in your life. Have that enthusiasm. Think about that word, enthusiasm, in uh, Romans chapter 2 and verse number 1. Here's that warning about having having zeal, but without knowledge. You can get yourself in a lot of trouble. So you need to understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, what God has to say about it, and how God tells you to handle certain situations. And listen to what he says in Romans chapter 10, verse 2. Paul wrote to the church at Rome, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. You see, you need to know what God wants and set out to do it. He's given us his marching orders. It's not me just deciding, let me, let me just rack my brain here a little bit and, and uh, call on my, my history and let's just see what I can do for God. 
No, no, no. Let's get in here and say, what does God want me to do for him? I'm enthusiastic. I want to do the will of God. I want to carry out his business. I, I want to win some souls to Christ. I want to see his work built. I, I want to see a sweep, a sweeping revival in America. I want to see all those things take place, but I don't want to get out here with a bunch of zeal without knowledge and hurt the cause of Christ. The truth is, we need to, they, like Paul wrote to the church there at Rome, I bear the record, they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. So here, here's the key. Know what it is that God wants and set out to do that. Set out to do the will of God. Not your will, not what you imagine, not what you think would be a good thing. Not, I, I'm going to treat those people the way that I think they ought to be treated. I, I just... And they're despicable. I'm just going to go after them. No, well, wait a minute. Are you sure that's what God wants? Maybe God wants you to love them. Maybe God wants you to be an influence on them. Maybe God wants you to have a testimony. Maybe God wants you to win them to Christ and get them on your side through logic and understanding and wisdom and knowledge and especially knowledge of what's in the old book. Get it out there and put it into practice in your life. God has given us his marching orders. That's what we ought to do. We ought to find out what God told the church to be doing, what he told the Christians, what he told the pastors, what he told his people. And we ought to say, by the grace of God, I'm going to have a zeal for that. I'm going to have a zeal and an urgency and an enthusiasm to do what God told his people to do through the apostles and through Christ when he personally walked on the planet before his crucifixion. And even after his resurrection, he gave them those final marching orders. And, and I, I just, I'm going to be enthusiastic and I'm going to be excited. I'm going to have a smile on my face, a spring in my step, the joy of the Lord in my heart, and, it's, and a motivating factor internally that says, I've got to do the will of God. Let God use you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Father, for the privilege we have to go out and tell a lost world about the Savior. Lord, help us to do it with enthusiasm. Help them, Lord, help the world to, to detect in us an excitement and a zeal for the Lord. But Lord, help us to do it according to knowledge, knowing what you've told us to do and, and how you've told us to do it and allowing you to be in control. Father, we give you the praise. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. What though the way be lonely and dark the shadows fall, I know wherever he leadeth, my Father planned it all. I sing through the shade and the sunshine, I trust him whatever befall. I sing for I cannot be silent, my Father planned sunshine tomorrow shadows may break and flee twill be the way he chooses the father's plan for me he guides my faltering footsteps along the weary way for well he knows the pathway will lead to endless day I trust him whatever befall I sing for I cannot be silent My father